So what NAS do you need to go for? You wanna go for a two or four or a six? We've got some right here. This is the two bay. This particular one is a TerraMaster brand. Then you've got a four bay Synology and also a six bay Synology. So which one should you be going for? Hopefully I can give you some thoughts around which one may work best for you. There's different factors that you need to consider as well. But first, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. I'm Emilio and we have a YouTube channel that is all around tech. And if you are here for the first time, or even if you're a regular visitor and you have not subscribed, please do that by clicking on the button on the bell so you don't miss anything. You'll get those notifications to let you know when new videos are being released. Now, for most NASs, you know, they're either gonna be used for a home, they're gonna be used for a small business, they're gonna be used potentially for a larger company, but generally a two or four or six, you may not see them commonly in a very large enterprise space unless somebody just needs a little one sitting on their desk for whatever purpose. Like for example, somebody who's doing video editing may want their own NAS sitting on the side on their desk. But generally in a larger company, you're going to see things like this, but that contain a lot more discs, right? So we're sort of focusing here on a more smaller environment. Now, it's not just the amount of discs that you can install on these NASs that counts. A lot of these NASs, as you go up different models, you're also gonna get additional features with that NAS, not just the additional capacity. The other thing to note is that the hard drives that you're gonna be able to install inside of these NASs are generally gonna be around the same, either a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch hard drive that you install they're probably gonna be a SATA connection. Now, they could be your more traditional sorts of hard drives. They could also be SSD, solid state drives as well. Some brands will let you do a mix and match where you can mix different brands of disks. Some are gonna work better if you stick to the same sort of model. Some other NASs, you may actually be able to install additional RAM resources into it. So it comes out of the box, and most of these NASs are gonna have RAM built in, right? But they need RAM to be able to do their thing. And some of these models will allow you to actually insert additional RAM sticks, RAM modules to be able to increase performance. Some will let you install maybe two slots of RAM, some maybe one, some not at all. You've got to think about how much capacity you need to install on your NAS. That's the really the first question that you need to consider. If you are needing, perhaps you've looked at all of your stuff, you've got a whole bunch of videos, documents, photos, whatever it may be that you want to store on your NAS, maybe it comes down to five terabytes worth of data. You've got to consider that when you're actually putting in the hard drives in here, and obviously anticipate a little bit of growth because the last thing you wanna do is go and buy a NAS and then you go and fill it up and then in a year's time, you're out of space and you need to go and upgrade and you're sort of stuck. So you will need to think about that when you are actually building and deciding which NAS to get. So if we look at this one right here, this is our two bay. Now this particular one, I cannot install additional RAM into it. And there is our hard drive slotted inside of its hard drive casing, which can easily just slot back into place inside of the NAS. The back of this unit, you've got a couple of USBs. You've got two LAN ports out of the box, but you can have another two as an expansion, and then the power, and then a very, very big fan on the back. Now, of course, the only thing with this one is that you are gonna be limited in capacity. For these particular brands, there is an operating system that comes installed on the NAS so that you can actually set it up, configure it, and then, hey, look, you've got access to all of your data right there in a really nice graphical user form. You can install applications. A good one would be Plex, for example. You can install Plex directly onto here, and it's great. Of course, one of the big benefits of a NAS is that you want to have redundancy built in, right? So you don't want to be able to lose data. The whole purpose of this is that, yes, in the olden days, you'd have a whole bunch of USB hard drives, but if you lost one, if you deleted one by accident, then you're sort of in trouble. While something like this has elements of redundancy or high availability, that if one disk fails, you don't actually lose your data. Something that you can do on your two terabyte. If I give you an example, you could buy a four terabyte hard drive, two of them. You stick them inside there, and then you raid them together. And you can raid them together to make one big eight terabyte hard drive. And that sounds great, great. Look, I've just gotten two hard drives that I had all on their own suck them in there, and now it's one big hard drive. The problem is that the data is being spread across two disks. If one of the disks physically fails or has some sort of a problem, you actually lose the data across both. So you're gonna have a bit of trouble when you're setting it up that way. What you may wanna do is you may wanna set them up in a RAID that actually has some redundancy built in. You can do this thing called mirroring, where you can stick in a four terabyte hard drive in here, a four terabyte hard drive in here, and then you mirror the data between the two. So that if one hard drive fails, 
not a problem because your other hard drive has actually got the data in there as well. But of course, you're gonna have to still buy two four terabyte hard drives, but you're only gonna get four terabytes worth of data to be able to be used because you're gonna stick two fours, you're gonna raid them together, you're gonna mirror them, and you're not gonna get eight terabytes out of here because if you want mirroring, you're gonna to have to sacrifice a disk for that purpose, right? That's something that you need to consider. When you get into the bigger ones, there's other different sorts of raids that we'll talk about in a second, but that's really the main configuration that you're gonna be able to do here. And that may be great for you. You then can look at something a little bit bigger, like a four or a six bay. Now these particular ones are Synology. They are great, sturdy, good units. I love Synology, been using them for a very, very long time, and they're a really good sturdy NAS. They use a lot in the enterprise space as well. And very much like the two, you can also set them up so that you have one big pool of disks. So for example, if I stick a two terabyte, a two terabyte, a two terabyte, and a two terabyte, and I grab them all, and I could have one big disk, two, four, six, eight, I could have a massive eight terabyte disk in there. And that sounds really, really good. You have that same problem though, where there is no failover, there is no redundancy on a disk. One of those disks, one of those four disks fails, you're in a world of trouble because you've just lost the data across all of them. Doesn't matter that you've got four of them because you wanna go down this route of not having any failover on a disk, you're gonna be in trouble. You can do the mirroring thing as well, where I could stick a two, a two, a two, a two, and then you mirror. So they're the sort of the basic raids. You've got a RAID 0 and a RAID 1. You can then do a RAID 5. You're gonna sacrifice one of these disks. You've got four hard drives that are two terabytes each. You may actually have six terabytes worth of usable storage, and you're only sacrificing one of them in there. So that's actually really good because you're getting the benefits of grabbing all the disks and chunking them together to get a lot more one big disk, and you've also got some failover. That's really good. And if you are completely confused about what RAID is and you wanna learn more, hey, why don't you check out one of my other earlier videos where we talk about RAID and hopefully that gives you a little bit more understanding about what we're talking about here. But at six terabyte, you've even got more options. Now here's something else that you may need to consider is what if you want a combination of disks? And I wanna say, look, two of the hard drives in this six bay NAS, I want them to be super, super fast. So maybe you wanna go and stick a couple of SSDs in there, maybe two SSDs in there, and then you RAID them together, one with redundancy, and that is a volume that you create with a relevant RAID configuration, and that's super fast. And the data that sits on there, maybe it's for you know reading videos or recording stuff or whatever it may be, but it's gonna be a bit more expensive because it is an SSD. But then the other ones, you just want just for bulk storage of your data. So maybe the rest of the, um, the other four, you just buy standard SATA hard drives and you're fine, great. And you can create a separate volume for those other four. So you've got two volumes, one that is really fast disks, one that is slightly slower. And that's the good thing about something bigger is that you can mix and match the sorts of disks that you want, but then you create separate volumes for each of the two based on the requirements. Then you got the back of the units. Now, they're not gonna be too different. You'll notice that my four bay here has just got a couple of LAN ports, while my big one, my six bay, has got four LAN ports. There's also these eSATA ports. There's one here. There's two here and that allows me to do like expansion. So in future, I need to have more capacity. I can just go buy another one of these and sort of get them together, talking to each other and you can expand. This one, I've got a lot more options and I can expand a little bit further. The internal bits are also gonna be a fair bit different. It's not just, as I said, the capacity, but it's also the RAM that's available inside, the CPU performance, all of that is gonna be increased if you go for a bigger model. You can also install these additional disks in there, little secret disks called MVMEs, and they're used for your cache or for your cache to actually write data. You want very, very fast data access, read it very, very quickly. The bigger ones, you can install more of those. The smaller one, you can't really do that at all. Now, the other thing that you may wanna consider, think about the weight of these units. If you're gonna go for something small like this, stick a couple of hard drives in there, it's not gonna be very, very heavy, especially if both of these are like SSDs. You go for some of the bigger ones, they can get quite heavy, and especially if you're gonna to need to move them around, it can be quite annoying. So the lighter one may actually be better. And of course, with each of these, you're gonna be going up in price. Twos are gonna be a lot cheaper, the fours, then the sixes. And of course, it's not just the NAS itself that you're gonna to have to buy and pay a little bit more for, it's also the hard drives. You're gonna to have to buy more hard drives, but it's also a trade-off with how much capacity you actually need. The bigger the capacity requirements are for you, the bigger, the more better the NAS you need to get. So what are you gonna do? Two, four, six. Ultimately, look, the, the, the nugget right here is you need to figure out how much data you actually need. Without you knowing how much data you need, you're not gonna know for which model to go for. The bigger one is gonna cost you more, but it will last 
a much longer time because you're gonna be able to stick a lot more discs into there. The smaller one has its own purpose and that may be good. But there you go, there's my three NASs, two, four, and six. Hey, as I said at the start, if you're new and you're not subscribed, do that, subscribe. Click on the button on the bell. I release videos every single week on all things tech, including stuff on the NAS, so you'll definitely find that helpful. And hey, stay tuned for the next video where we talk about all things tech. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.